this company is very spiteful so i'm just gonna suck it up and get the experience that i can get and dip my first month was terrible if i'm being entirely honest between having anxiety attacks crying in the back of my bunker and only taking home 400 to 600 a week what's up youtube welcome back to breaking truckers my first month was terrible if i'm being entirely honest new driver chronicles her journey from prime to western express and to her new private fleet where she's currently at right now in this clip right here is pretty much sums up how training is at prime inc and how the work environment is at western express no more wasting time let's get it hold on okay y'all so to apply to this honestly i really love trucking you know and i'm an introvert so it works out for me but the way i started wasn't it i got my cdl through prime inc you're probably questioning why didn't i stay with them and why did i go to the company that i'm at now because the company that i'm at now is just child is bad the reason why i didn't stay with prime is because they wanted you to stay on the road for about a month to two months and you had to go on a waiting list for a truck and you weren't allowed to go home that whole time and if you decided to go home you'd probably be waiting even longer for the trainer to come back towards you and in the midst of waiting for that truck you had to stay in the truck with your trainer in order to get paid and i could not stand my trainer she was constantly yelling at me she was constantly panicking for no reason at all and she was also prejudiced that was like a whole thing and i just couldn't do it with them anymore so i went to the company that i'm with now which is western express which is one of the worst trucking companies in the industry if i'm being entirely honest and why did I come to Western Express? Well, they basically sold me a lie. Two weeks training, which is true. But that 1500 a week they be claiming that you make, that's a goddamn lie. You be taking home like 400, 600, that's it. Then they also claim that there's no contract that you sign on to when you first come into the company. That is also a lie. There is a contract, but it's not forcible. So if you wanna go fight it, you absolutely can, but you have to stay for 180 days. I'm currently working on getting out of this company. That's a process as well, because I honestly don't want to break the contract and go to a whole fight with them. This company is very spiteful. So I'm just going to suck it up and get the experience that I can get and dip. My first month was terrible, if I'm being entirely honest, between having anxiety attacks, crying in the back of my bunker, and only taking home 400 to 600 a week, going home every week and now i stay out every two weeks and i still really only take home um, 700 to 800 a thousand if i'm lucky it's slowly paying off but like i said i'm waiting to dip and i'm almost there i just recently got accepted by a private fleet so you know i'm about to be out of here soon enough so yeah keep asking questions peace so let me stop right there and bring in another clip from another prime trainer complaining about her trainer. It, it, it seems like a, a common theme over there at prime. You, it sounds as though that you got to go through a whole host of trainers in order to get the good trainers. I mean, so far, the only good trainer that I have came across was Junior Honduras. I mean, Junior, are you the only good trainer there at Prime? I mean, why, why do Prime have so many messed up trainers over there? I don't get it. Why, why does these trainees got to go from trainer to trainer to trainer to, to complete their miles before they get in their own trucks? What is up with that? So the other part of the saga from last night, and I guess the part that makes this really frustrating, is that the air and heat controls in the back of this truck are pretty inconsistent. I had the AC on all day yesterday and it was just blowing warm air. So I was a bit toasty all day yesterday. It actually started working once the sun went down and I was asleep by the time we got into the truck stop. 
when we parked, I woke up to move my bedding up to the top bunk. And just in case you don't know, when the truck goes off, so does the AC and heating unit. And you have to turn on the thermocooler, I think, whatever it is, the ABS unit, in order to keep it going. I hadn't turned that on. I had honestly just kind of forgot about it and my sleepiness and then trying to move up to the top bunk. Anyways, after my trainer's rant on showers and stuff, I go back to sleep. And I wake up to the bunk being so hot I can't breathe. Now the window was already open and it was not helping. It was that hot. Being that we just came from Texas and Oklahoma, I was like, oh my God, maybe it's really hot outside. So I waited a little bit and then I asked my trainer if he could turn on the air, just like a notch. His response was no, because he was actually chilly. And I have to admit, I did not expect a no. So I asked, can you turn it on and just close your vent? And he said, the vent for the heater doesn't come from the vent on the bed, it comes from the vent on the floor. So he had cranked the heat up. Let me just say, it was not cold enough last night for him to have cranked the heat up as high as he had cranked it. But being that we have to go inside anyways for showers, I elected to sit up front and roll down the window so I could cool off. Much later, he had told me that he had turned the heat off. But I don't think that I should have had to wait in sweltering heat until he felt warm enough to turn the heat off, and that's why I moved up front. Well, after showers, it seems like we slept last night in the cool air without heat and without AC. And I guess this morning, he cut the heat on again. And that was fine because it was actually pretty chilly outside and in the cab. Now, going by what he said last night, we were supposed to leave this morning at 7 a.m. So at 6.30, I got up so I could go into the gloves and use the bathroom. He asked me, was it too hot? I said, yes, but it's okay because I'm going inside and so it's fine. When I got back 15 minutes later, he had cranked the AC on and I just don't know what we're doing here because it's already like, it was it's already 40 degrees there about last night. There was no reason for AC. I don't know if he was trying to be helpful or vengeful. Being that I heard him tell somebody else that he's quick to teach somebody a lesson, I'll take you for your word. I left him in the AC and I'm out here sitting in the sun comfortable. She's not kidding about Western Express. I did make the call to Western Express and their recruiting department does sell you a nice size pipe dream. Yes, they do. I talked to a recent uh, driver that was at Western Express, but he decided to leave and go to another company. And he said, yes, there is a whole contract that you have to sign with the company. Everything from HOS to money just be taken out of your uh, out of your checks. If you go out of route, it's a whole contract that you guys have to sign. Now, as she said, you don't have to sign it, but I, I don't know the repercussions of your not signing it. And yes, the money that she was making, she's not kidding. She explains this in this clip right here. Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to another episode of Struggles of a Rookie Chugger. I wanted to show you guys my last check from Western Express. So first, I'm going to show you like the first half of it. They got really spiteful and they charged me fuel, which is two forty eight ninety four. And the only reason why they did that is because I deadheaded from Ohio to Pennsylvania after waiting damn near eight hours for a load. Mind you, this is a check for one full week. So yes, that is correct. I only did get two loads within the span of one week. Now this is the ending result, and this was my very last check from them. $71.41. And yes, I only do get paid, or used to at least, get paid 47 cents per mile. And that is your miles column. I only did 699 miles within the span of one week. Damn, my feet are mad long. Sometimes with leaving a company, they can become a little spiteful. That's not the first time they took a fuel charge from me. 
they've done it plenty times before but they only really did it this time because i quit and i took the truck back to the terminal they're lucky i didn't ditch it but usually my checks were about 400 to 700 dollars i've only ever gotten one thousand dollars one time and I ran two weeks at a time. I was home every other day. And a lot of times they would force me to run recaps. So my advice to the rookie truckers in the field, when coming into a mega carrier company, for example, Night Transportation, Swift, Western Express, <laughs> JB Hunt, things like that, the names that you mostly see on the road, ask the drivers how they feel about the company read the contract read the fine print make sure it's guaranteed what you're getting told and if you don't like it get the hell out of there for the people in my comments asking about a private fleet most private fleets only really want people that have one to two years of experience but some private fleets, such as mine, and maybe some others around the world, you can try to talk to them, and they'd probably be willing to let you in maybe past six months. In my case, I have eight months of experience, but I could back the hell out of this truck. So you got to show them what you could do. Show them your skill, because they're going to put you to the test. But... Also, be patient, take your time, and get as much experience as you can. Learn the real world first. All right, have a go. You know, I kind of agree with this driver, you know, this rookie driver. Yeah, do when you do your research, when you're interested in coming in to this industry, yeah, talk to the drivers, you know, go up to the fuel islands, go up to the truck stops. But let me stop you right there. Let me stop the show. A lot of these drivers, mm, they don't like to talk. And those that do like to brag way too much. And the reason why I said they like to brag way too much when they start talking about, oh, well, I love what I do. I, I love this company and all like that. And, and you can make this, that, and the third. Hey, but by the way, when you fill out the application, make sure you mention my name. My name is Saatba Uba and my truck number is 1234. So exactly why do I need to mention your name and, and, and your truck number? Oh, well, because I get a referral bonus of $2,000. Hmm. So because you get a referral bonus of $2,000, is that the reason why you so excited about telling me about what this company is? Because you want me to come in and use you as a referral bonus so you can get that two thousand dollars why yes yes okay thank you so yes i do agree to an extent of talking to some drivers to see how they really feel about the company now i can say this if it's a mega carrier like what she just mentioned no i i would say maybe stay away from them type of drivers and asking them how they feel because they do get a healthy referral bonus anywhere from a thousand to like fifteen hundred dollars or more try to talk to drivers that's that work with smaller carriers or mid-sized carriers you probably could get a better feel of how they feel about the company than you do with a driver that drives for a mega carrier and she's exactly right. Companies do get spiteful when you decide to move on. You tell them, hey, um, I'm about to quit or whatever, whatever. They'll start to mess with your money. They'll start to mess with your miles. They start to do some things that, that, that's not in conducive to you. Say like you need to be home on the third and it's already the first they'll give you loads that uh, go away from your house instead of going to your house so the the thing of saying quit tell them that you quit or give them two weeks that has been a debate for a long time people like myself 
I say not. But if you're a good driver or a good person and you want to give, you know, the company a couple of weeks, fine. But within, but within that couple of weeks, you'll see how that company is going to react to you. And then again, and last but not least, I know you guys are going to come to this young lady and be like, oh, well, you know, 41, that, that ain't no money. That ain't no money. You guys got to understand this is an eight-month driver right here. I mean, she only been driving for eight months. And so far, she got she did at least enough research to understand her situation. So you really can't get mad or get on her or roast her for the fact that her last paycheck was $71. And she only made 43 cents a mile. But as you guys can hear, a private fleet, you know, gave this young lady an opportunity, gave this young lady a chance to show what she can do. And it sounds as though she's happy with them. Big G's got it locked.